Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're exploring a question that was asked in a recent Q&A series. In short, a viewer asked to myself if buying a Ryzen 5 7600 with a 4070 Ti would be a better option than going with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D with the 4070 Ti, as both hardware combos cost roughly the same amount. In other words, should you go with the faster GPU or the faster CPU? So to find out, I have benchmarked both combos. But before we get into it, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ugreen and their new lineup of Nexode Pro Series chargers. The Nexode Pro Mini offers 65 watts of fast charging from a single port and can charge up to three devices at once via two USB-C ports and one USB Type-A port. Or for super fast charging, the Nexode Pro 100 watt charger offers not only additional power, but also the ability to charge devices such as a Mac Pro from 0 to 86% in just 60 minutes. But if that's not enough, the Nexode Pro 160 has you covered with hyper fast 140 watt charging from a single port. All Ugreen Nexode Pro chargers feature Air Pyra and Ganfinity technology to allow very impressive charging from a very compact unit and are compatible with all modern smartphones, tablets, and laptops. If you'd like to see the rest of the Nexode Pro lineup, then for more information, please check the links in the video description. Okay, so traditionally we have typically recommended that gamers on a budget use the min-max strategy. So that is to say, spend as little as possible on basically everything, with the exception of the GPU, where you spend as much of the budget as possible. However, this isn't always the best option depending on the games you play. There are a lot of games that are CPU bound, such as city builders, real-time strategy, and competitive shooters. For these games, upgrading your GPU might result in little to no extra performance, depending on the CPU that you're currently using. Still, the Ryzen 5 7600 is hardly a weak CPU, so the 7800X 3D is less likely to offer a performance advantage with a current generation mid-range GPU. And yes, the RTX 4070 series is still mid-range, even if the price doesn't necessarily reflect that when compared to what we've seen historically. Anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, so let's move on. Now, the idea for this test came about from a question we were asked in a recent Q&A series, which of course we did answer with, it depends. But it really does depend. Are you playing new AAA titles at high resolutions? And if so, the age-old min-max strategy would be the way to go. But if, for example, you're playing competitive shooters using competitive quality settings, then you could easily end up CPU limited. And in that scenario, the 7800X 3D slash RTX 4070 combo would come out on top. At least this is what we've seen in past tests. We're using various different CPU and GPU configurations. And I thought a quick updated test looking at the specific hardware combination that was pitched to us, that'd be an interesting idea. Now for reference, when paired with a high-end CPU, such as the 7800X 3D, the 4070i is generally 20% faster than the standard 4070 at 1080p, and then 25% faster at 1440p and 4K. Then on the CPU front, the 7800X 3D is on average 30% faster than the 7600, though results here vary wildly depending on the game used for testing. Speaking of testing, both configurations have been paired with DDR5 6000 CL30 memory on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master using the latest F21A BIOS revision. Okay, that's everything you need to know. Let's get into it. Starting with Avatar, we see that at 1080p, the 4070 Ti combo is much faster, delivering 32% greater performance. Then at 1440p, the margin increases to 35%, and we see a similar margin at 4K. So for visually demanding single player games that you absolutely want to play using the highest visual settings possible, maxing out on your GPU is the way to go. Now, Starfield is a much more interesting single player game from a hardware requirements perspective, as it is very CPU intensive. Still, the 7600 slash 4070 Ti combo was faster, but this time only by a 14% margin at 1080p, then 18% at 1440p and 24% at 4K. So given what we saw in Avatar, you'd probably expect the margins in Starfield using the ultra quality preset to be much more in the 4070 Ti's favor. The Last of Us Part 1 is also very CPU heavy, and as a result, the 7800X 3D combo does better than expected. At all tested resolutions, the 7600 slash 4070 Ti combo offered around 20% greater performance, so it was clearly faster, but again, the margins were much smaller than what was seen when testing with Avatar. 
Now, for testing Star Wars Jedi Survivor, we've enabled ray tracing as that increases the CPU load. And we see that at 1080p, this does hand the 7800X3D a small performance advantage. However, at the more GPU limited 1440p resolution, the 4070Ti enjoys a clear advantage, delivering 27% more performance. The 4070Ti though also appears to be becoming memory limited, as in memory bandwidth limited, at the 4K resolution, and now it's just 17% faster than the 4070. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered was also tested with ray tracing enabled, and this allowed the 7800X 3D slash 4070 combo to deliver more performance at 1080p, and even 1440p this time. Though, once we jump up to the 4K resolution, the 7600 slash 4070Ti combo was 22% faster. Realistically though, both configurations are enabling high refresh rate performance, and for most, the 7600 slash 4070Ti combo is going to be more than acceptable at 1440p, despite being slightly slower than the 7800X 3D slash 4070 combo. Now, Call of Duty Warzone, that was tested in the solo battle royale mode, so in-game testing which can be difficult to replicate in a multiplayer title. But after a three-run average, these are the results. To my surprise, the 7600 slash 4070 Ti combo was generally faster, though the 7800X 3D did enable better 1% lows at 1080p. Now, because this game is very difficult to test, the drop I used was light on action, so I could actually make the benchmark pass without being eliminated, and therefore it's unlikely to be the most demanding section of a given match. You could also tweak the visual settings further to make the performance more CPU bound, but with the basic preset and our test area, you're generally going to be better off with a faster GPU, at least when comparing these two combinations of hardware. Thanks to the replay feature, it is possible to benchmark sweaty endgames in Fortnite, so that's what I've done here. At 1080p, the 7800X 3D slash 4070 combo delivered 50% more performance, so that is a massive uplift, and we also saw a 65% increase in 1% lows, which most competent gamers will absolutely notice. So this is a good example where the stronger CPU is the way to go. And even at 1440p, the 7800X 3D was up to 38% faster, and again, this difference will be noticed. It's not until we jump up to the 4K resolution that the 4070Ti hits the lead, though only by a very slim margin. It's also worth noting that many Fortnite gamers will opt for the lowest possible quality settings for a competitive advantage. So there is still room to make the game even more CPU limited. <laughs> I got one kill at <laughs> the final. <laughs> then last up we have Counter-Strike 2, and here the 7800X 3D slash 4070Ti was slightly faster at 1080p, and then slightly slower at 1440p. In fact, it wasn't until we hit the 4K resolution that the 4070Ti combo was able to offer a substantial 29% performance increase. Again, it would be possible to make the game more CPU limited by using lower quality settings, but I think medium provides a good balance here, and both configurations did deliver over 300 FPS, even at 1440p. So there you have it. As expected, allocating more of the budget towards the GPU will enable a higher level of gaming performance in most games, especially modern AAA single player titles. Though do keep in mind this is only true to a point. The Ryzen 5 7600, it is still a very powerful gaming CPU, delivering similar gaming performance to that of the 5800X 3D or the Core i5 14600K, for example. This means if you were to compare the 7800X 3D and RTX 4070 to say the Ryzen 5 5600 and RTX 4070 Ti, the results wouldn't have been nearly as favourable for the higher end GPU combo. Of course the point of this comparison was that both hardware combinations could be purchased for roughly the same price, which is why the viewer asking the question wasn't sure which combo was worth investing in. As dominant as the RTX 4070 Ti combo was, there was one example we came across where the 7800X 3D and RTX 4070 worked much better, and that example was Fortnite. Now, if you're a single player gamer, you play games such as Avatar, Alan Wake 2, Starfield, and so on, you might be wondering why anyone would need more than 280 FPS in Fortnite. And that's a fair question. In that example though, it was the 1% lows that were of most concern, but even so, there are multiple benefits to higher frame rates overall, assuming you have the monitor and I suppose skill set to take advantage of it. Moreover, you'll likely come up against some scenarios within the game that are more heavily reliant on the CPU than what we were able to test here. And the same also applies to Counter-Strike 2 and Warzone. 
There are certainly more games I could have tested that would have shown results like what we saw in Fortnite. An obvious example would be, say, something like StarCraft 2, which is incredibly CPU limited, especially endgame or 4v4 matches with large unit counts. But the point of this test wasn't to spend days or even weeks testing my entire games library, but rather to demonstrate that depending on the game and how you like to play it, one configuration can deliver better results than the other. But again, typically speaking, the min-max strategy does work well. And that is going to do it for this video. If you did like it, you know what to do. Also, subscribe for more content because we do have a lot more GPU-related content and even CPU-related content coming up on the channel very shortly. You're not going to want to miss all of that. Also, there's Floatplane and Patreon. You can subscribe to either one of those services and that will give you more Harbour Unbox goodness. Access to stuff like exclusive monthly live streams for members only, Discord server for members only, behind the scenes content, Q&A stuff, a lot of cool things there. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.